Your witness. the nature of the business, a developer will find a property, whether raw land or an existing structure, and develop it for residential or commercial purposes. Uh, general contracting is when I'm engaged by somebody to do a job set on a scope of work, drawn up usually by an architect, and there is a fee for completing that, time schedule, and everything. business for My role in the business, in addition to consulting my brother as my partner in the business, in addition, William Burke. Is that William Burke Jr. or just William Burke? I think it's just William Burke. Okay. Uh, different aptitudes come from different families. My brother can't hang a picture. I turned into a carpenter after school and uh, did that as a hands-on occupation for a long time. So I made my money. If I didn't work an hour, I didn't get paid for the hour. Uh, a lot of that was out west and moved back here. My brother and I had partnered up and he managed the finances. I would give him a budget, we would talk about the property, we would talk about how much had to go into it, what we felt we could sell it for. And then he was mostly in New York City and I would do everything else. One down in Mantuoki. And did you come to have to need to hire uh, workers in order to assist with uh, removing debris from that property? Yes. And doing any demolition work? Some, yes. Was one of the people that you hired to, to do that work, uh, Keith Shaver? Yes. White shirt and blue tie on. So how how did you come to hire this machine? My cousin, who is also in the construction business. What's his name? Jason Burke. Is he also the Jay Burke? Yes. Yes. I called him because I needed manpower to try and take on some projects down in Mantelokin, specifically cleaning them out, which was backbreaking and difficult. And he gave me the names of a few people, and through those people, I was connected with a few other young guys who could do that work much better than me. I and mean, Keith was one of them. So, moving from late winter of 2012 into early
Yes, I think so. We were down there for somewhere between six and eight weeks at different times, depending on the weather. It was difficult to get into Mantelokin and Bayhead and parts of Point Pleasant at that time. The National Guard was down there. You had to have passes. Everybody had to be in generally the same vehicle. You had to register your license plate. So the length of time, and it was very difficult getting down Route 35 to get anywhere. They had closed off certain parts of it. Um, all the debris that it took out was piled along the streets. So it took a while. I think somewhere between six and eight weeks we toiled down there. Now, at that time, did you have any projects in Asbury Park? No. Did you, had you ever looked to do any projects in Asbury Park? No. Did you become aware of a potential property that might become available to you located in Asbury Park? Yes. Keith Schaefer called me. And you remember about when that was? Yeah, give me a minute. It was, we were into January, February, probably sometime near the end of January, is my guess, sometime, sometime in February, the 13th. Okay. And what did you, what did you learn? Keith had called me up and just said there was somebody who, he was working for a woman who was interested in selling her house. And I should come and take a look at it. steps sort of through the front door um, there was an outside door to the porch that could be opened enough to get through and then there was the front door to the house itself were there boards visible in the front of the house if you remember there was a piece of plywood I think set over to the side that was replaced at the end of every day uh, I don't know if the door to the porch had a lock on it, but there was something there that I remember seeing. So the plywood would cover the front entrance once you got beyond the porch? That, or, or would it cover the entrance from the street? I, I think it was into the house, I think. I can't remember really. So tell us about your first visit to the house. What do you remember? I got into the house. Between the front porch door and the front door of the house, there was a path about two feet wide, clutter everywhere on the right and left. And so can you describe the clutter? And if you can, what did you see? What, what, what were you looking at? 
on my first trip, I really didn't pay much attention to it. It was just boxes and bags and things piled up. I mean, just stuff everywhere. I mean, it was everywhere. So you navigated this path through the front door? Yes, I could walk into the front door and take another four or five steps. And what did you see? And more of the same. More of the same. Were you able to determine how many uh, levels the house had from that first entry? I could see that there was a stairwell that went up and then 180 switchback up to the second floor. I knew there was a second floor because I could see the second floor windows. And I knew there was either a crawl space or a basement because I could see the window wells on the side of the house. So, did you on that first visit, did you go up to the second floor? No, you couldn't. When you say you couldn't, what do you mean? Why not? There was no further to go. It was five or six steps inside the house and everything else was cluttered. The stairwell was blocked. There was nothing, there was no way to get up unless I wanted to move the stuff myself. See, what about going down to the basement? On the first visit, no. Five steps, five or six steps in, five or six steps out. So about how long did you remain on the property that first time? 15, 20 minutes. sized up what I thought were telltale signs of what might be trouble from the outside and then I walked in and I looked around at the windows, I looked over at the stairs, I looked at the opening into the living room or dining room, I'm sorry. There was a mantelpiece there that you could sort of make out. Uh, things like that, just wondering whether or not it was the kind of structure that was falling down on itself or if it was seemed sound. Let me ask you this, did you estimate how old the house was? No, I didn't. And after this sort of inspection or examination, did you come to any conclusion about the property? Without having either gone upstairs or down to the basement? To me, it looked like it was relatively sound. Based on my observations. So things are built, unless they're by design, at 90 degree angles to one another. Roofs are cut in certain ways, supporting members of houses are generally in different places. And when you can go into a house that is not well supported, not well structured, doorways will have reveals on them that are one size on one end and it's much smaller on the other. There can be a number of different reasons for that, but just for me looking at the house, the windows seemed to line up with one another. The sashes as they come up and down, the middle of them seemed to line up with one another. Um, there wasn't any major cracks in the trim that would indicate that something was failing anywhere in the house. And the outside of it, short of the front porch, the front left side of the porch, if you're looking at the house, had clearly started to sag. But that wasn't something that intimidated me regarding the soundness of the house. Then what about the garage? <laughs> um, the garage was a test. The garage was a test, but it was in total disrepair. I, I, I didn't walk in it. I didn't walk in it. I'm not sure if I could, but I'm pretty sure there was a roof. There was a branch through the roof, and then the other side of the roof was cracked, but honestly, from my perspective, having been a carpenter for 12 years, rebuilding four walls of a garage with an opening for a door and cutting roof rafters and putting plywood on, it's not a big deal. So, uh, were you there by yourself during that first visit? Yes, I think they called, either called Keith or just stopped by, but I believe that he was there. Not that I recall. Uh, do you happen to remember if uh, did you use a flashlight? I don't recall. From what you remember, you were able to see what you needed to see? 
Yes. So after that first visit, what if anything did you do? I called my brother and spoke. Yes, William. William, yes. Yeah. Uh, should I refer to him as William moving forward? Is that like better that for everybody? Because I, so we don't. Okay. All right. Uh, yes, I called William and I said uh, Keith Schaefer had uh, given me a call and there's a property in Asbury Park that might be interesting to look at. Okay, so what happened after that? We talked about it, as we always do, and 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 part of and part of this, we had a lot going on at the time. Part of this had to do with the fact that we were raised in Ashford Park. That's not the question. <clears throat> said he's working for a woman who's clearing out the house. I think she wants to sell it. And that at some point he told me that somebody had made her an offer for 25000 and she wanted more. Lisa Linder's contact information. And you say Lisa Linder, who was Lisa Linder? Lisa Linder was the owner of 1602 Fourth Avenue. And how did you come to learn that? Key. All right. Tom. So you got her contact information, and then what did you do? I called an attorney. Uh, I don't know if I called an attorney first or I called Lisa. I probably called Lisa and introduced myself and that we would then need to work with the attorneys to let those guys do what they do. Title search, legal work. So, in mentioning attorneys plural, did, did she have any comment regarding that? No, no she didn't have comment. I did that, I remember. Did you discuss having a contract Yes. Did you discuss the details of who, who was going to do that? I knew who our attorney was going to be, but I didn't know how she was going to proceed. Okay. And who was your attorney? Lee Levitt. And how long, I'm talking about 2013, how long had Lee Levitt been representing you or any of your business properties in, in the area of real estate? I think for a year or two. And about how many projects had he uh, assisted you in purchasing? Five or six, I believe. So did you have a um, sort of a regular method of letting him know what, how, would you contact, how, how did that happen, how the contract was generated? He would ask me the details. 
deals. And in most cases, there is a real estate broker who then prepares, fills in the blanks on a real estate contract that I sign and then I give to him. And then with that, he gets the relevant information from Lisa's attorney or whoever the other seller's attorney would be, whether it's a bank or whether it's a person. And they work together to bang out the terms and just take it from there. Was there a real estate broker involved in this transaction? Not in this case. To your knowledge, had the house ever actually been listed for sale? Not to my knowledge. Um, prior to the signing of the contract, and we'll talk about that in a minute, did you go back to the house a second time before you actually signed the contract to purchase it, if you remember? I went back at least one more time with my brother Bill. Okay, this is before you signed the contract? I believe so, yes. Let me ask you this, if you remember, from the time that you first, and about how much time would you say elapsed from when you first saw the property until you returned with your brother Bill? A week or two. So this happened fairly quickly? Yes. Uh, when you went back with your brother Bill, had there been any significant change in the condition of the house? Significant, you know, it's sort of like a deck chair up the Titanic. You know, I mean, to say that now you could walk Judge, 10 feet into the house. Hold on, hold on. From the judge, I object. It's a simple question. Is there a significant change? It's either yes or no. 